test of time for sure. In season one, you had a little, this was a question asked by Kat in a question. Um, in season one, you had a little cameo in episode four. Yes. And she asks, um, she's especially interested in For All Mankind right now. Um, would you consider doing a cameo in there? Oh, I hope so. I hope I do it before it's over. Yeah. Good, good. Because, you know, thinking about <clears throat> Stanley and Hitchcock, how they had a little cameo and everything. Yeah. So that would be fun. Um, so what's coming up? You've announced, not recently, you haven't really talked about it, but Akatar and a project with Disney. Mm -hmm. So where do they stand? What can you tell me about those? Uh, there's nothing firm on either one. Uh, Akatar is still at Hulu, it's still in acti active development. Um, I know they're very high on the, on the property and uh, they've been very encouraging and we're very hopeful. The, the truth is the strikes are not that far in the past right. and everybody is still kind of like getting up to speed of okay let's now now the strike both strikes are over what are we actually doing what are the schedules right. once the show gets picked up so we just have to kind of be patient on that front and the same with the other Disney project it's just things are still not quite up to speed yeah. Disney's my other passion yeah annual pass holder I'm trying to arrange an outlander at Disney weekend oh that'd be fairly fair. next year um, we've got a, an announced spinoff coming for Outlander, Blood of My Blood. Do you see that as one season, or are you hoping that it will be a long-running show, or at least a couple of, you know, two to three seasons? Or? I think the hope is that it's a, a long-running show, yeah. Very good. And have you, um, did, did I read something that it's going to be filmed signed up simultaneously with part of season eight, or is that kind of... That's in flux, too. There's a lot, you know... Um, for various technical, complicated, boring reasons about <laughs> schedules and weather and stage space and crew right. availability and right. blah, 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 blah. I'm trying to figure out exactly how they film both of those projects in Scotland while sharing a lot of the same crew members and, you know, right. and, and production assets uh, between them is just very complicated. But there, so I'm, I'm not sure they've quite even landed on exactly what the ABC of that is yet. Can we expect that um, uh, uh, debut will come after season eight? I'm not even positive of that. I don't know that, and that's not even up to us so much as that's up to STARS, and okay. I don't know that STARS has made a definitive decision on that. Okay, because we're all kind of yeah. anxiously awaiting that. Any talk about uh, other spin-offs, the Lord John Gray kind of thing? It's always in the conversation, and we I, I'm a big fan of that series. I think that would make a, a great series, but there's nothing active happening in there. Okay. Um, how did the writer's strike and the actor's strike affect, I mean, what do you think an effect is going to be um, out of what came out of that? Like they were discussing earlier today, the discussion about AI, use of AI, and think, what, what do you think is going to be an effect on the shows you work on? out of that. In terms of AI? AI or, or you know there was a I, I know that <clears throat> Terry has been really uh, vocal about crew hours and things like that and that you have been um, they were saying you know it's a better atmosphere right now later um, um, and that that has been important to you um, and that was something that they were working for right. in the strike in the contracts. How do you think that's going to affect the industry in general? Um, I think, you know, the shock, the double shock of the two strikes and them being such long strikes will, will have an impact that's going to be felt for, for years. And since so many of, of the issues were working conditions, were, you know, uh, respect uh, of artists and how they do their work and, you know, and how they're compensated, I think there has been a certain shift in sort of like, oh, we have on the studios and the networks part, we have to actually pay attention to this stuff. This actually does matter and people are willing to walk off the job, you know, if, if it's not addressed. So I think there's at least a moment of hope that maybe things will start to turn because this was such a, a devastating strike financially in a lot of ways. Right. But you never know, you know, it's easy to see that they all, everything also just goes back to business as usual and then we have another strike, you know, to find it all yeah, over again. Yeah. But I'm hopeful, I'm hopeful it changed. I think in terms of AI and its impact on what we do, I, it's really hard to say. There's a, a tremendous amount of hype about it. Um, there's a lot of reality to it, but I think the future is very unclear in terms of specifically how will that affect what I do 
in terms of running a television right. show. You know, in the visual effects world, we've been using what's called tiling. You know, they referred to it on the right. stage today, right. where you take a group of extras, photograph them, and then you repeat them and repeat them to do crowd scenes. So that's been commonplace for a while. But it, um, like going back to Gladiator, they were starting to right, do that, right? Right, Was that something you did in for the collage? We did, we did it on various scenes. We would do tiling is just one of those yeah. tools, but I don't think there was like a, a realization of, oh, wait a minute, what are we doing? We're now we're, we're reusing all these people can you now use them in other projects? Oh wait, those people only got paid once. Right. It started to open up a bigger sort of can of worms right. about, well, wait a minute, how does this work? So that's that was a big issue in the SAG strike. But going forward, using AI to recreate performance is a complicated issue, and I'm not sure why I want to do it. It's like, I understand that the tool might allow me to do it. The tool might allow me to take you and then create a performance from you. Right. But it feels like it's very labor intensive for me to sit with somebody and, well, make her digital copy do right. this. Right. Can't she look to the left more? What if she was happy? You know, it's, it sounds <laughs> tiring as opposed to just having you on the set and right. say, do you look happy? You right. know, and then you do it. Right. So right. I'm not sure how that's all going to work out, you know, in practical terms uh, in AI and film production for a while. I can see if that's used extensively that the quality of work just won't feel real. Yeah, and I think audiences are pretty smart and they usually are able to pick up on things that are fake. You know, that's why visual effects work struggles a lot to make this background look correct. A lot of times the audience smokes it out and they, and they just know it's not real right. and, they, and they don't buy it anymore. I think some of the you know, uh, it, it, you, you see this in the Marvel movies a lot, where the, the backgrounds and the, the environments are so clearly phony that the, yeah. the audience yeah. uh, doesn't give themselves emotionally to what's happening. They want to believe it's real. And when you're recreating people, it's very hard. You know, there's the, when people talk about the uncanny valley, about, you know, not being able to recreate that, because there's something intuitive about watching another human being that is difficult even, I think, for AI to completely right. capture. Yeah, um, and I think that it, it's not, certainly would lead to a degradation of the product. Yeah. You know, um, we don't want to be that artificial society right. in 25, 50 years, you know. Unfortunately, it looks like there's a possibility we're heading towards some of that with people who are maybe not as concerned about the talent and the production values as somebody like you are. Well, I think, yes, I think that's true. Uh, I also think that the countervailing force to that is that they also want these things to be successful. And if an audience doesn't like it, it doesn't matter whether it was cheaper, faster, yeah. better. If they don't, if the audience isn't like showing up and really like turning out, it's not gonna work. Does that kind of make it more money driven? Well, it's always money. You know, I know it's always money it's, driven, that's, but, but, that's but then the, you have artists who, yes, you know. But the artist has to be good enough to generate an audience to make the money, right? Right. right. And it's the same thing with this AI and where it's all going. It'll have to be good enough to elicit to make you cry, right? You know. And if it can do do, do that, then then we're in a different conversation. Right. I'm not sure it can do that yet, and I'm not sure it's yeah. going to do that because I, I think there is something ineffable about human interaction and how we feel about each other, and I don't know that it's um, duplicatable. You yeah. Know? I'm not. I'm not yeah. You know, they were artificially constructed. Uh, there are moments that are constructed in a computer that can be affecting. You know, there was a moment in uh, For All Mankind in the opening sequence, in the opening show of this season. Uh, I don't know if you saw it, but there's a beat where... I'm the, just starting to watch the show. There's a, this doesn't spoil anything, but there's a, a moment where an astronaut in the opening episode reaches out his, his hand in space, and he's coming up to an asteroid, and he runs his hand across it. It's a beautiful shot. You see his hand going like this, and the dust is coming out, and it cuts back to his face, and he smiles. It's just a very emotional moment. And then the visual effects guys told me that the hand was actually CG, like it was a computer yeah, yeah. generated. Well, I mean, that's the kind of thing where you couldn't possibly have that as a real shot. You can't really send can't somebody really up on the space shuttle and, yeah. you know, 
have them reach out and touch an actual aspirin. Exactly. You know. But so. it did, it made me feel something because you cut back to the astronaut, to the human face. Right. It was like, the, so the connectivity between the human being and the artificial, we can, our brains can kind of bridge that right. gap and we can still feel something. Yeah. You're always going to have people who are, who are going to fight for the artistic and the emotional. Tom Cruise has said he doesn't want that kind of, you know, he does his own stunts. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's important to him to have yeah. the the reality. Yeah. You know, so who knows? I mean, I'm sure there is a ton of CGI in the Mission Impossible movies. There has to be. There has but, to be. I'm not sure. It's, it is a lot of practical stuff. Right. So, yeah. There is. But that's the kind of, but he also makes a lot of money. Yep. You know, his, I'm a huge fan of those movies. Oh, yeah. You know, so... Um, so it's going to be a balancing act for a lot of years until some sort of a balance is found. I, I think. think so. There'll be pushback, and you know, there's there's this point that we're just not going to want to use it for certain yeah, things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Valeria and Ian talked about the attitude and everything on set for Outlander being very different. Um, does that please you? Yes, it does. I'm happy to hear that. You know, I, we wanted it to be. Um, uh, special. We wanted it to, to be a, a place where you could do good work because we treated you well, right. and you, we all worked together, you know, collaboratively to do our, our very best, and that we cared about people, and that we didn't want to abuse people, and we wanted to like make it, you know, that kind of atmosphere. Right. And can you make a suggestion that all the crew get the ice cream? Yes, <laughs> I, I felt bad. I was like, oh, I wasn't there for that, but yeah. I saw you sitting there. <laughs> I was like, oh, wow. Okay. We were kind of at our table saying, Ron is sitting and listening to this. We know he's not there every day, but, you know, this has got to, you know, maybe sit, have you sit up and say, well, maybe these are something that I need to. Yeah, there's always, there's always room for improvement. <laughs> well, I really appreciate you chatting with me for a little bit. Oh, I'm you know, not keeping you too long and uh, 